Yeah, and I've got I've got my notes. Got me notes. Got me notes, so, <laughs> so I don't get it wrong. Although hopefully I won't need them. I'll have we'll notes, mate. I know this might be a really long episode. Oh dear. Shall we? Uh, should we just? <laughs> what did this if, voice come from? I don't know. If the episode's really long, just play it faster. <laughs> Okay, I want to talk about cross-origin fetches. Oh god, I'm bored already. I know, I know. I deleted a lot of these slides because they were really boring, so I'm hoping what's left is <laughs> not. But these are the things we're going to look at. Cookie surf course, corp, corp, corp. Yep, well done, actually. <laughs> <laughs> if you're playing this in fast motion, you missed that a lot. So. Do, do they do this on purpose? What, what, how like they use four-letter C words for the worst things? <laughs> yes, I think that probably is intentional. So, so chorus is a four-letter word. Yes, it is. Uh, these are all C bombs. So, Cookies isn't. isn't <laughs> but why is this not? Why is this one this? No, never mind. Never mind. That's that's what I say. We're gonna go back in time. This is 1993. You know, this happened. Oh, this, this guy. This was a new thing. This, this was a new thing. Block at that point in time. Yes, this is in Mosaic. The image tag arrives, and I think I hadn't touched I, a computer at this point. Um, well, I was nine. So I had, but not on the internet. You know, I wasn't allowed on the internet at that point. Also, no one in Carlo where I grew up knew what the internet was. This was a community that found tinfoil to be too technologically advanced. <laughs> anyway, image tag arrives in Mosaic. And I think I've done so much research into this, and I'm still not confident. But I'm going to say it anyway. I'm just going to go full confidence. This was the first sub resource the web ever had. <laughs> Like, as if the camera would correct it, like, Jake. I was waiting for someone to crawl out of the camera and go, um, well, actually. <laughs> actually, there was this weird SGML there probably, thing. Anyway, there probably was. Yes, first sub, sub resource. That landed. And also, interestingly, oh, look at that. It can be cross origin. Was, well. the, was the concept of an origin even established? Nope. Um, <laughs> but, so at the time, they would have said a different domain, I guess. Or so if, if Facebook existed, they would be leaking. Yeah. Well, We'll get, we'll get on to that. We will oh. get on to that, because they weren't leaking a lot at the time, because cookies hadn't been invented yet, because they Until came along in 1994. This is Netscape 0.9 beta that arrived. Look at that research number. I know. Strong. I didn't even look at the notes for that. What? <laughs> so, Do you know what motivated cookies? Uh, state. State and HTTP. Mm. So things like login, because like, right. it was entirely stateless before that, but it wanted some way I mean, to know that stateless. particular user. I, except cookies are sent every time. It's so, that's state. Still stateless. Is that not state? I mean, the protocol is stateless. You send state with the stateless protocol, but <sighs> so that the protocol doesn't have to hold it. Fine, fine. OK, I, I would count that as state. Shut up. Right, next year, 1995, look what lands. Look, at all, look at all these sub resources. All these sub resources, but importantly, script. So this is Netscape Navigator 2. How many people would notice this is frame and not iframe? Yeah, that's a frame, not an iframe. I've not used a frame for so long. That was the only thing I ever used bef like when I was a kid playing with HTML. Loved it. Always had the sidebar, the side nav yeah. in a frame because you could drag it. Oh, great. And it would stay there. And yeah. Like, yeah, it was, yeah. It was perfect. And then your URL at the top never changed, which was useless. But uh, never mind. Um, something bad had happened at this point. One of pr probably. You started saying yo? Yeah. <laughs> it was actually because <laughs> if I had more. So you're going to see some more code coming down here. And so I needed something short to put in there. So that's why that is. <laughs> but the, the web made a huge mistake. Here, what, probably one of the biggest mistakes in the design of the web we ever made, and it's right here, and it's that no matter what site is containing these, the cookies, for example, .com will be sent with these requests. Right. That it, and that was a big problem. And it was a problem that we continued to make uh, for a series <laughs> of other elements as well. Ah, I see. Here's your, your problem. Yeah, case. there you go. <laughs> one more letter, and that overflows. Why was it a mistake, Jake? Um, we'll get onto that. Oh, OK. But it wasn't just a mistake. Uh, for sub resources, it was also for some kinds of navigation as well, because this would be sent with the cookies as well. And now yes, that I can see as a mistake, because I, I can send someone to a random form and suddenly delete their bank account or some crap. That doesn't seem good. That seems bad, doesn't it? It does seem um, bad. But this this is how all of this stuff was was built. Right. Big mistake. Uh, and we'll I'll go through some examples of of the horrible things that Great. can happen. Uh, but. I do want to acknowledge that things were starting to go right at this point as well. So we had these frame objects, right? 
And these frames will tell you things about like the images on the page, the forms on the page, mm -hmm. the links on the page, like sort of basic JavaScript we had back in 1995. Uh, but they decided that um, you would only be able to access those properties if you were on the same origin. Origin, bam, as the you know the parent site or whatever. Yeah. And the origin was decided to be scheme host port number. Mm -hmm. There we go. And that's that. So things were starting to become good. Like they were thinking of the projections <laughs> that they should have thought of back at the start. Um, look at this. I have never written these lines, but I I have. <laughs> ActiveX, I remember as being the source of many evils. This is uh, XML HTTP request. This is the first oh. version of it. This is what it looked like. It started as an ActiveX object. Oh, yes. Yeah, you used to have this like horrible try catch thing just to find the exact, the correct string of that that you needed. Because there were multiple versions of this anyway, whatever. It was horrible. But yeah, we did eventually get standardized. And it took a long time. Nine like, years. An, another nine years before we started to get cross origin oh. of these. And like, so th this was the change. Like, we, we had XHR in other browsers long before that, but this was the cross origin one. With cookies? Without cookies? Well. Well. Because so here, so like I, I'm going to fast forward to modern code. Yeah, because Cause it, it all worked yeah. the same. Look at this, nice. That's nice. And they decided that for this to work, it would have to be an opt-in system. Like to, to you know, oh. they don't want you to just be able to opt in by the site providing the data, not yes. by me, the person it, who writes the code. Yes, because you didn't. They didn't want you to just be able to go and grab someone's emails or whatever. Like yeah. the, the same problem with like the, the frame oh, stuff. Yeah. But you, you, so you needed this to be an opt-in system, and that opt-in became cause. And what it involved is the other side sending this back, uh, you know, that header. Yeah. And there you go. You can now access the data. So but they're saying, like, everyone is allowed to read this resource. Yes, exactly. But like you picked up on before, the request would be sent without credentials, we mm -hmm. call it, which is cookies, right? Yeah. It's cookies and some client search. Can the site opt in to also allow with credentials? Yes, it can. Um, so oh. you would do something like this. You do the same existed on XHR. Um, but you would need this access control allow credentials true. Right. And your access control allow origin, you couldn't use star. Now, Can't use star for this. It so, has to be the origin. But sometimes, so this is obviously headers in the response. Yes. Which means the request has already been sent, processed, and a response has been sent, which could yes. already have done damage. Um, so these are the slides. You're not talking about the slides I deleted from this because I thought they were boring. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> no, no, but you, you're right. So the, the, the way it was decided when this was invented is like we don't need to um, we don't need to worry about the request if it's already a kind of request that the browser can already send. Right. So this like a request to there with credentials, it's an image tag. You can already do it. That's true. A post request, you can do that for form. Mm -hmm. And there's also rules around like the kinds of headers you can use. So okay. you, like for content type, you, the content type can be uh, for the for the like the body of the post. Yeah. Uh, can be uh, URL encoded, the X URL, yeah. I can't remember off the top yeah, of my the, head. Yeah, the thing, the yeah, long thing. Because you can do that with forms. Uh, form multipart. Oh, I just remember. And once forms. you deviate, you go into the whole pre flight request thing that we're not going to talk about, I'm guessing. Content, you know. No, so yeah, yeah, if you deviate, there's a pre flight where it has to go and yeah. ask first, can I make this request? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That was... Interestingly, you can do a post request with the uh, content type text plain, and that's fine. Because you can already do that with the form element. Oh, they can. Did yes. No. Yes. This is like I always forget about this. The uh, the encoding for uh, uh, form data text plain is um, that's how I used to send emails to myself. It's just like value equals, equals thing. or key equals, yep. and which then... is almost entirely useless because if you have because they're line break separated, but your form values can have line breaks, so it's impossible to parse. True. Yeah. So, but, but, I but always, it exists. On my... Pages back in the day, I would have a contact me form where you send emails to me, and I would use that. Yep, and a yeah, and a CGI script to do it. Yes, absolutely. Um, but the point I want to make about this is like, so yeah, you have CGI to. CGI script mail too. Was, oh, oh, with the body of. Yes, fine. You have to send the origin back. The exact origin, not star. You can't do star if you're doing credentials. Interesting. So, how would you get this? Because how do you get from this? From the request, right? From the request. Now, at the time, we had the referrer header. The um, infamously misspelled referrer header. The misspelled referrer header, but also the often absent referrer header. True. Because internet safety software, actually, I'm not even going to do that, because this, this, this is actually a good piece of safety. Like Leaking the path of where you were on the previous site is actually quite privacy invasive. Or could, yeah, it could, yeah, contain... it could have your usernames, account num yeah. user numbers, all of that sort of stuff. True. So a lot of this software would just 
removed the referrer. Yeah. Like, uh, but then that means it's useless for this. True. So we invented a new header, origin. And that's sent with the request. And that's right. like, so, so it doesn't have all of the path data that would be leaky. It just says the origin Was this came from. header invented as a response to this problem? Yes. That's interesting. Yeah, it is exactly that. So that exists on cause requests. Um, oh. and, and that's how I that works. I think it on pretty much any request now. We'll get on to that. <laughs> <laughs> so the point I want to make about this, and I want it to get here a lot quicker than we have. <laughs> <laughs> but here we are, is that adding this is almost always safe. Almost always. And so, yet, almost nobody does it. Yes, more, more the pity. Uh, <laughs> but so when, when these requests are sent without like cookies and stuff, the question that we get a lot is like, well, why, why, can't, why, can't, why do we need an opt-in if it's sent without cookies? Yeah. And the problem is intranets, because they're not protected with cookies. True. Um, IoT devices all around your house. Um, a lot of people will run dev servers that have seek like ah, that, yeah right and you, so you don't want if visiting a site for me to just be able to go to one two seven zero zero one yeah go go to my just router's crawl. web interface and do shenanigans with it exactly yeah yeah so this is almost always safe if except when it isn't <laughs> except, so the rule is I would say the rule is go to the URL in a incognito tab so there's no cookies there and look at it and if you are happy with the world seeing that. From your phone on mobile internet. Um, or, or, well, no, well, from whatever connection that you can access oh. it from. Um, so so like, if you access your router and it says like, your name on it in an, in an incognito tab, then you're like, I'm unhappy with that. So it shouldn't have this header. But right. if you're happy with the content and the source, you can put that header on it. That's the vast majority but of But nobody's web. following that guidance, Jake. Because we've well, that's why I'm saying it right now. We've like I'm trying... hoping that everyone's going to go, oh, I'm going to add it to all my stuff. You know? Nobody is. Right. Let's be real. Right. Let's get back to these. Uh. So I was saying that this is like a huge mistake of the web. Yo. Yo. Yo, what up? This up. <laughs> <laughs> Am that, I cool? Am I oh cool man. now? Um, if you weren't already white, <laughs> you'll be so much whiter right now. <laughs> Impossible. I feel like I'm going red. I'm embarrassed. Right. Um, so we've got this problem here that the, you know, you've got a URL that gets the, yeah. user, the current user's avatar. Now, I can, through a load event, to tell if this loads. And by that, True. I can determine you are logged into example.com. Bad. Oh, yeah. OK. Right? I, see, I see where you're going. So this is uh, this Dasho. This is a sort of convention. Dasho. Dash, Dasho. Hello. <laughs> Dasho. That's my rap name. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, we got Dasho. So uh, the, the original avatar the user yeah. uploaded. Yeah. But then from that, I can get the width and height. And now that's like user identifiable data. Potentially. Because that's, that's more likely to be unique than, yeah. than other stuff if it's the, the original version they uploaded. This is all leaking of data that shouldn't really happen. Mm -hmm. but it does, thanks to these bad mistakes that were made. And we're only recently starting to fix some of these. Uh, I mean, it's a hard problem because backwards compatibility is like one of the uppermost goals on the web. Absolutely. So just breaking that will probably break, or changing that will break a good amount of existing sites. Or will it? Dun, or dun, will dun. it? So this is one of the fixes. You put in your cookie. So this, this is how the, the site would deal your, your login cookie. So you got a session ID or mm. whatever. But it, look, look at this. Lacks. Same site lacks. And what this means is only send this cookie if the request came from my site. OK. So that means it would not be sent with this. If this is on evil.com or whatever, the, cookie, the session cookie would not go along with this. So this would always fail to load. Or right. you'd get but a generic avatar. But now that site has been broken, which is something well, like not really. Well, only if it expected to be able to display avatars on other sites. Which was reasonable to expect, right? Some, maybe. But then, <laughs> well, I, it, if you, I, I would say not, right? You don't want a single URL to deal out your avatar because you're Probably. logged in. Because I mean, it's an information leak. Uh, there are cases where you want that, yeah. in which case you need to do something else. And you probably need to change your code right now, because Chrome 80 made a change. Oh, yeah. We decided that if this says nothing about like same site cookies, we are going to assume same lacks. site lacks. Yeah. Actually, no. Um, we filmed this episode a month ago, and a lot has changed in the world since then. Uh, this cookie change that we're talking about actually broke a few important sites like government sites and shopping sites. And we felt like now, especially, is a bad time to be doing that. So we've actually rolled the change back. We're still going to be doing it eventually, but we've rolled it back for now. Uh, check out the link in the description for more details on that. And in the meantime, back to the episode. 
So that means, yeah, if you have one of the service where you want people to be able to look, it's not going to work unless you go in and say, same site. Doesn't lax not. stand for relaxed, like the? Yes, it does. So there is also an even stricter version. There is a stricter version. Oh, wow. The stricter version works for uh, works for navigations as well. So oh. even if you navigate from site A to site B, it will not send site B's cookies. Interesting. That are strict, which so is if really I have hard. a link like here, go to GitHub, and you press the link, you'll be logged out. If, if they use same site strict. Interesting. Um, uh, which is why Lax is really the simplest one to, to use, yeah. unless you want to go above and beyond for some certain bits and pieces. Um, so yeah, Chrome you made this change. Firefox is going to as well. But same site cookies in general, well supported across all, all of the browsers. Yep. Um, and it also solves this problem, which you mentioned earlier on as yeah. well, where I can have a form and I can submit it. But even though this is a full navigation, it won't send those cookies, even if it's lax. Right? Yeah. It's fine. But what if you can't do that? For some reason, what if you can't change your cookies or whatever? How can you protect yourself from this? This this is surf. This is uh, yes, yeah. with C surf tokens and stuff. So you can use the tokens. They're horrors. It's hard. It's, it's annoying. Hard. There is a way you can do it in like I'd say modern browsers. I mean, for quite a while now. There's much mm -hmm. easier ways. Another thing you sort of alluded to. This header. Mm -hmm. This header was originally designed for for cores, but we've started adding it. Well, we've since added it to lots of other requests. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've ever seen one without it, to be honest. A get request. The first navigation, yeah, because and all get requests. If a call, yeah. a cause oh. get request will have it. All other get requests won't. Interesting. The reason is um, backwards compatibility. There was some. There was enough servers out there that would were using the the presence of this to decide it was a cause request. <laughs> of course, I did. Okay, sure. Yeah, sure. Ex exactly. So it's added to post requests and like all mm. of that. It's just. Non-cause get requests don't have this header. Right. Doesn't, but it doesn't matter, because it was a post, so you're fine. So, so you, you can just check to see that this is the origin you're on expecting. On the code for your post handler, you say, does it have the origin header? And if so, not doing it. Exactly. Yeah. Makes sense. And yeah, and that's a nice, easy way. You don't need all of the to this, uh, yeah. tokens and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, nice, easy way. Another example. So again, I can use the load event to know that you work at example.com. Oh, you are in a position yeah. where you have access to their intranet mm -hmm. because the logo loaded, didn't it? It did. And I mean, this, th and this is not something that's typically solved with cookies. Like, a lot of intranets assume they're safe just because they're on an internal network. They're not, but they do, right? Yeah. So here, I'm detecting quite a lot about you as a user. How do we solve this? This is corp. <laughs> so this is a header that you add onto the image thing that says. It's going to only be embedded same site. Ah, OK. So if you use this resource on anything but the same site, it will just fail to load. Yeah. OK. Yeah, so you would look like you were not within uh, the corp.example.com. It just okay. looked like you didn't have access that to that. That makes sense. So there we go. Um, next problem. Now, this is a case where you know this wouldn't be solved by uh, same oh, site because cookies. you would never put a resource policy header on an HTML file? Well, so you could. Um, but you might not, or you, or you might have forgotten, or something. Okay. A lot of server, I mean, many servers out there have not done this. Yeah. Obviously, this is not going to load. No. But it is going to bring this HTML file into the process because ah, image and encoding is done in the process. Yeah. And then we're back in Spectre land and stuff. Spectre meltdown, those CPU bugs that will let you hammer away at certain things yeah. and start maybe trying to read some of the data. So this is a problem that is fixed by Corp. <laughs> There it is. Look it's, at it. Yeah, it's well, beautiful. This is cross, cross origin read blocking. Ah. I had to memorize that because I knew I was going to get that wrong. So it's not resource um, blocking. No, no, it's read blocking. Read blocking. Definitely read blocking. Uh, and how this works is like as part of fetch, before things enter the process, what it does is it looks at particular uh, MIME types. Mm -hmm. it, it looks to see if, if it has the no sniff uh, header on, and it can get okay. straight to then. But Chrome will also do things like um, if this looks like HTML, and it's not a cause request. Not letting it through. Also, um, it prevents it from ever getting to the process. Yep. But it has to be a header on the response. Uh, or is, no, it, no, is corp just a technology? A corp, corp is just a, a cor, corb, 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 corb. Oh, I feel like I'm going mad. <laughs> corb corb uh, is just like a, a feature a, in Chrome. Yes. Well, it, yeah, it's not like corp it's in, a header it, or no, it's not a header. Or it's in the fetch spec, and in the fetch spec version, you have to do some like you have to have no sniff on the, the response to say like, don't don't look at this to see if it's an image or not. Right. 
Um, but you see, you know, when it's got no sniff, and so with no sniff, you're saying I guarantee that I set the correct mind type on yes. the content type header. Exactly, and then it just goes. HTML cannot be a sub resource. Gone. Gotcha. I mean, if it's a calls request, it can, but you know, yeah. this code isn't run for calls requests. Okay. So yet, yeah, what will happen is it will uh, look at it and go this, and Chrome will do extra sort of sniffing around it as well. And go, well, this looks a bit like HTML. I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna let this through. It does the same with JSON. Does the same with XML. I wouldn't let JSON through. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. Final one. Here you go. Coop. This is Coop. Coop. I've heard it pronounced. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so this is something that you would use on your HTML page. <laughs> and and Coop requires Coop. Yes, it does. <laughs> Are you following along? <laughs> you can consider as be a test after this. <laughs> Hope you're concentrating. <laughs> and what you're saying here is, is you making a declaration that everything on your page is either going to be cause or authorized by some of the means. Like the site is going to opt into okay. you including it. And the opt-in would be using the corp, but a specific opt-in to saying this can be embedded cross-origin. OK, so this would then if, wait, but how images still work if they had no sniff in the correct MIME type? Uh, yes, but now if you've got this header on your page, they will start failing. Oh, Because you're saying, I am saying I want, I am opting into this stricter model. On a per sub-resource basis. On a per sub-resource basis. And uh, the reason for that? is to opt into more powerful features. Because we, are, we now know right. once you've done this, you're in a position where you, you don't really have anything to spec to meltdown. Yeah. Right? Like, so that's the point where we can go, oh, we can give you high resolution timers. Oh, we can give but you only if shared we, array buffer. That's if we can guarantee that there's no sensitive data in your process. And this enforces so that guarantee. So if I remember correctly, and I'm excited about this, not because it's so easy to understand, but because I think this is the headers that would allow us to bring shared array buffers back. That is it for everyone. Is it exactly that? Yes. Yes. Because that, that mean... high resolution timers, all of that stuff yeah. that we've had to take out because of Meltdown Spectre, it can come back. Because when we, when, if, if and when we get this, we'll also get threats for WASM and all this stuff on mobile, on the other browsers. Yep. So for that, in that sense, yay. Yay. In terms Excellent. of understanding it, woo. And and that is pretty much everything I want to talk about, because uh, we've, we've gone on quite a lot. <laughs> um, but I want to acknowledge that there's a, we've, we've looked at a certain class of problems here. And this is where one site is stealing stuff from another site mm -hmm. or making the other site do things it didn't want to do. And that makes the user sad, right? Because <laughs> they lose data or they have yeah. their privacy like, invaded. There is a whole other class of problems where site A and site B totally fine with sharing data. Okay. But the user is sad about it. And this oh, is, that's the tracking problem. This is cross-site tracking, and this is not that. This is a separate problem. And I want to spend a whole episode on that at some point because <sighs> there's a lot of interesting things happening in that space. So that's a shout forward to another episode. Oh, some other time. Oh, there we go on that one. But that's enough for now. Yeah. Okay, bye. We've had a guest in the studio. He's about to. He's about to arrive. Here he comes. He's very. Just to let you know, Summer is very carefully dodging cameras and lighting equipment in order to do this. Um, but look, look, this is the official show dog. Look, 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 look. This is Watson, and Watson is going to be very sad if you don't click subscribe right now. Don't you? And click the bell. Don't you, Watson? Don't you? Don't you? Don't you? Don't you? Bark at your face right now. Off. <laughs> Even the dog's yawning now. Uh, the dog's He's bored. very I'm excited. Bored. <laughs> oh, goodbye.